So when I think about my brother Malcolm, I think about this little thing that just happened with his daughter, and I'll be honest with you, I got ten children, seven girls, three boys. If I thought I had a child that thought somebody killed me and wanted to avenge it and waited 30 years, I sure enough would have an attitude. I mean, you can give that chump time, time to die from natural causes. I mean, girl, do you love me or not? But, but listen, listen what they, listen what they told us. They told us that Malcolm X's daughter, see, I don't deal in friendship. Did she do it or not deal in logic? Here's, here's a woman here in New York City. She decides she's going to kill Farrakhan. She leaves New York where all the murderers are. <laughs> People that have killed somebody you just to practice, but they know they're gonna kill somebody on July the fourth. They just want to practice. She leaves New York, all the murderers, and goes to Minnesota where they ain't even had a drive-by shooting. To hire a white boy to kill one of the most guarded brothers, a white boy. We don't even have to deal with that. I knew Malcolm. I love Malcolm. Malcolm called me the Sunday that he died. I was working Basin Street East. He said, Brother Greg, you, 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 you're coming by today. And I said, Malcolm, I love you. And I said, I love you so much, I don't even want to take a chance to be there. He said, what do you mean, Brother Greg? I said, well, I closed tonight, Sunday night at Basin Street East. And I said, but I had my wife book me a flight into Chicago at 8 o'clock this morning, and I'm going to Chicago, and I had uh, way beneath my salary book me into a college about 10 miles from the airport. And I'm going to go there and speak this afternoon, and I'm going to stay there until they tell me you did. Because I'm not going to let this government get two of us for the price of one. And I'm going to call Adam Clayton Powell when I finish talking to you and beg him not to come there. Because today, the United States government is going to get you. And I'm not going to be there. I love you. I don't even want to take a chance of my heart changing. So I went to Chicago. And when they came and they told me, Malcolm's been killed today. I got back on the plane and came back here. Malcolm was killed because of a, another brother named DePinto. A lot of people thought he was African, but he was East Indian. He was born in Nairobi. He's the one that changed Malcolm's head from black nationalist to pan-Africanism and made that connection from here to there. And the government said, we can't let this happen. He's the one that persuaded Malcolm when he went to Africa and stayed seven weeks and met with all the real leaders. And then he's the one that discussed with Malcolm of bringing racism to the doorsteps of the UN. And as Malcolm was being shot dead in New York City, DePinto was being gunned down in Nairobi. All right. Same time. All right. Same time. So don't tell me about no black Muslim. The same time. Same time. Malcolm was being gunned down. Now let me finish this by saying this. And you folks out there on radio, when we cut off, that's why you should be here. Yeah, y'all come on down. Yeah. We'll be here. We're not. You know, if you get here late, we'll be here next week. Just wait on us. You ain't got nothing to do. Nothing to do. Now, let me show you how this white racist system treats black folks. The black folks that they got to kill Malcolm, Malcolm was standing on a stage like I am. 
they threw a smoke bomb in the back. When everybody got to watching the commotion, the brothers ran up with double barrel shotguns and shot him. But under the Freedom of Information Act, we were able to get the autopsy of Malcolm and all the bullets in Malcolm is going down. Now I can't stand on this stage and y'all down there pointing up, which means the government has such a low view of those black folks that would do it. They didn't even give them real bullets, they gave them blanks. And Malcolm was shot from the ceiling top. And also under the Freedom of Information, the CIA had been forced to admit that they rented the Audubon Ballroom a week before. And that's when they went in there and tore them walls out and put them guns in the wall and shot him from a downward projection. That's what this game is about. But Malcolm lived a good life. The movie did not portray that. Of course not. not. The movie was an insult. I mean, here my man get killed, ain't got no insurance, no money. Betty pregnant with twins, got four kids, and then have two more, and then go ahead and raise them and go on and get her a doctor's degree. And in that old heathen movie, they ain't got room in that to tell me about what Betty did. But can show Malcolm snorting coke and having sex with a white woman in a car. This is a black person that did that. And then show Malcolm putting his head in a toilet. Now that's in the book, page 122. Malcolm has never put his head in a toilet. So if that shows up in the book, the conspiracy goes all the way back to Alex. Who didn't write Malcolm, nor did he write Roots. A white boy, the senior editor of Playboy magazine, Murray Fisher, wrote both them books. And as we stand here now, them two books makes about seven to eight million dollars royalty right now every year. Then how come when Alex died, they had to auction off his stuff to pay off his bills? How come they didn't attach his royalties? Because he don't get no royalties. That's the game. All right. The whole book's a lie. 